Keeping watch over Delhi's daily grind. The Jama Masjid, or Friday Mosque, is India's grandest. And it's the symbolic centre of power for India's 130 million Muslims. Tonight, the faithful have come to watch power pass from father to son. Four hundred years ago, when Jama Masjid was built, Empress Shah Jahan sent a message to the Shah of Bukhara to send a religious scholar. He was given a grand welcome and Shah Jahan announced in this Jama Masjid the first son of a family would be made the royal Imam of this mosque. And that same divine dynasty is still in command. Tonight, Syed Ahmed Bukhari is inheriting the mantle from a father too old and ill to continue. 28 years after his father passed on the baton, Syed Abdullah Bukhari is almost too sick to anoint his own eldest son. The old imam must be carried in from hospital for a ceremony which verges on anarchy. With doctors in tow and oxygen on tap, a once firebrand imam is now frail and emotional. मुझे आज तेरवाई शाही माम बनाया है और एक वालिद एक बाप जब अपने बेटों को अपनी जिंदगी में I have been made the 13th royal imam. When a father sees his son being capable of taking on his father's mantle during the father's lifetime, his tears are tears of joy. I am proud that my father has these hopes and expectations from me. I hope I am able to fulfill it. It's not just his father's hopes he carries. The steady stream of gifts come from those looking to the Imam for leadership or favours. <laughs> Finally, the last step in assuming the throne, the crowning white turban, a regional mark of respect which crosses religion and ethnicity. And being India, you can't avoid a garland or ten. The man who set in train this 400-year family tradition, Shah Jahan, didn't just build the mighty Mughal Empire which ruled before the British. He also knew a thing or two about architecture. He built the wondrous Taj Mahal. While his grand monuments are still in one piece, the world around has changed beyond recognition. <laughs> It is the misfortune of Muslims. Those who have ruled this country for 900 years are today slaves. Slave uh, is too strong a word, but I would say Muslims are victims of injustice. They suffer from various injustices, economic, political, social, etc. So they're among the poor of the poor? Yeah, poorest of the poor. But the new Imam is itching for change. Sayyid Ahmed Bukhari is determined to revive past Muslim glories and reverse recent wrongs. In 1992, hardline Hindu activists stormed and demolished the Barbary Mosque at Ayodhya. They say Mughal rulers built the mosque on top of the birthplace of Ram one of Hinduism's most important gods. It has uh, 
polarized two communities uh, as never before. I think uh, it has done a lot of damage and it will take long time to repair that damage. Thousands were killed across India in the riots which followed. And eight years on, the scars are still fresh. We are not afraid. We will fight their conspiracies against Islam and Muslims. Though he says politics is his preferred path, the rhetoric is a call to arms. We have to become a political force. We have to get rid of the crutches. We've lost the battle till now. We should become a defeating power. But the tough-talking imam will find it hard to prove he's more than just a figurehead. He's just a greenhorn who has entered politics, who has ambitions, but uh, I doubt whether he will uh, make a successful political career. His father could not. I don't think he should be leading prayers in uh, Jama Masjid, that's all. That is his function. Uh, I pray that he doesn't devil in politics. It is not his area. But the battle lines between the new imam and hardline leaders of India's Hindu majority have already been drawn. And he faces a monumental contradiction, how to build a powerful religious party which does not inflame religious hatred. For those before him who have tried, history's not been so kind.